My name is James Quickkiller, the Fighting Cowboy. And you're watching my manager and the host of the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Forget about it. Hi, this is Ray Boom Boom Mancini, and you're listening in to the Bad Brad Berkwick Show. Now, Brad's told me he's won many accolades for this interview show. I haven't seen any. And he's told me he's world-renowned for his interview uh, style, his charming personality. I doubt that. And he told me he can get anybody to anybody on his show because everybody wants to do it. I don't. So, Brad, at this point, this is what you want me to say, your stupid line, right? But I'm not going to say it. I keep telling you I'm not going to say it. So, until then, listen in to the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. And Brad, do the right thing. Just do the right thing. I'm John Ruiz, two-time WBA heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching my man, Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Forget about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you know him as the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. You know him for his catchphrase, forget about it. You know him as the author of the world-renowned book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. You know his snazz, you know his jazz, you know him for all that pizzazz. When it comes to boxing commentary, he does the most. Without further ado, here's your host of the Bad Brad Berkwit Show, Bad Brad Berkwit. How did all these people get in my room? Yeah. Hey folks, we're back with another episode of the Bad Brad Berkwood Show. Now before I introduce my guests, I want to send out a sincere appreciation to all the people that uh, reached out to me on Facebook, called me, texted me, sent me instant messages, and also on our different pages, the Bad Brad Berkwood Show and my personal page, that you were very touched and moved by former WBC Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Alfonso Ratliff's interview. As you were moved, I was moved. You know, if, if you didn't learn yet, when we brought the show back last month, yeah, I'm the guy that does the questions and I'm the one that does the research and all that, but that's my job. It's my job to do that. It, the show was about my guests and telling their stories. So if you were moved, you might have been moved by the questions I asked them, but the answers are what really moved you. So remember that. Um, you can leave comments. A lot of people said, where do I leave comments? I know not everybody is social media savvy, but you go under the uh, videos and you can leave comments there. Make sure you subscribe. We got several guests coming on the show that you asked for me to get on, so make sure you subscribe and you can see those guests. Now, my guest today is another special guest, as I always say. He's the former, he's retired, the former WBC lightweight champion of the world. He was a warrior, and I'm going to tell you something, if you haven't seen his fights on YouTube, I did watch quite a few of them again, because I saw them originally, but I watched them again. Blood and Guts. When they talk about Arturo Gotti, he may have been Blood and Guts, but my guest today was Blood and Guts too. He'd get cut up, and he'd keep going and going. His eye was out there. It was like watching Carmen Basilio back in the day, when you would see Carmen's eye get swelled up. That's a, that's a definition of a true warrior. So with that said, I want to welcome my guest to the show. David Diaz. Thank you, sir. Thank you for appreciate having me. You. Absolutely. I appreciate you coming on. Now, you're coming from Chicago, you said the north side? Yes, sir. The north, okay. side, north side of Chicago. Okay. Don't mind crazy, what they call it. Okay. Well, what we're going to do today, like I said, the show is all about you. No right or wrong answers. Whatever you say is, is what it is. We're going to talk some boxing. We're going to talk some life. We're going to talk about your life after boxing. And then we're going to have some fun questions I'm going to throw at you. Not a problem. All right. But before that, I want to read a quote I got about right. you. Okay, it says, David Diaz is the American dream come true. He rose through the ranks as a young amateur in Chicago to go on to make it to the Olympic team representing this country, then to become a world champion. Currently, he's a successful businessman. Now, if that is not the American dream, I don't know what is. David personifies that. Mm. Bobby hits. Oh, wow. Bobby said that about you. Wow. Bobby, I'm not, I'm not paying you, by the way, because <laughs> Bobby said, I'm busy. I said, we're all busy, Bobby, but Bobby is a Jimmy Busy, but he sent me that. I said, send me a quote, and oh, that's wow. exactly Very what he touch. said. Very touch, very touch, and uh, appreciate him. Bobby, Bobby's a special person, man. He's, he's a guy that gives his heart out 
for this sport. And I was just with them this past weekend. Right. And I tell them, man, how do you do this stuff and still come back to it? You know, the promoting mm -hmm. and doing all that. And, and now the restaurant. And now the restaurant. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, he's got his little active thing on the side. Oh, yeah, he's a yeah, man yeah, of all yeah, hats. Yes, yes. Many hats, I should say. Yeah, and no, uh, he's a... He's like, I don't know, Dave. I, don't, I, I, I honestly don't know why these two people are doing it. was just uh, a funny thing. But we know what we need to do. We need to bottle him. Yeah. And sell it because he's got all this energy. The energy you know? and the movement. And, yeah. And, and the, the passion. passion. Yeah. yeah. The passion that he has and how he's, um, he could just talk to anybody. Yes. Anybody. Yes. I seen him moving and shaking out there in the lake. I was like, wow, this guy, man, just, That's everybody, it. He's, he gravitates, everybody gravitates to him. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Let's start out with where did you grow up? I grew up in about, uh, like in the north side of Chicago. Uh, when my parents immigrated here from, from Mexico, um, they moved out to uh, Irving Park and um, uh, Sheridan Road, real north side over there by Gordon Terrace and Sheridan Road. Um, that's where I was born. Um, we stayed there for about five years, uh, then moved out a little bit more north towards like the Belmont, California area in Chicago. Um, and then my dad was able to purchase a home uh, in uh, Humble Park. Okay. And move around there. And, and my life, all with the boxing amateur, uh, was from the Humble Park days that, that I grew up. Okay. Just out of curiosity, where in Mexico is your family from? What They're part? from this state called Guerrero. Guerrero, uh, where Acapulco is. Okay. The city of Acapulco, we're from Guerrero. We're very, my mother's from a very small village, a very remote village. Um, we have to get there by a uh, uh, little uh, boat. To oh, wow. To, yeah, it's pretty cool. How uh, often do you go back? Can't go off that often. No yeah. more. It's, it's a little dangerous, it's dangerous in the area, yeah. Okay. During your childhood, what made you want to get in on boxing? It was actually my dad. My dad um, saw that I was a very rambunctious, uh, getting into trouble all the time. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> yeah, can't yeah. see it. Right? Um, uh, and he's like, man, this kid loves to fight. He loves to throw punches. So my dad took me to the gym and went into the gym. The first day, you don't do it like that anymore, right? Where you just get kids and the coach says, hey, uh, you come in and the coach says, you want to box? I'm like, yeah, I want to box. Yeah. He threw me right in, right into sparring. Wow. And, not, and you know, I didn't have a mouthpiece. He gave me a mouthpiece for somebody. Put it on, let's go. I, sh I sparred three rounds. I, I I can honestly say the guy really handled me, but I stood there and I went after him. Showed the heart. Showed the heart. What year was that? Oh, it's about 85, 86, okay. something like that. And the coach says, okay, I'll train you. And he says, he was a, um, a softball in his kids. He's like, how do you feel comfortable fighting? And I turned like this, you know, just fight like this. And that's the softball stance, but I ride with my right hand. Interesting. Yeah. So he, I just felt comfortable at that and Did you, I don't remember this, but did you switch up in the ring? No, you always, I was always, you always, always softball. softball. Always, okay. I just felt more comfortable that way. Okay. Let's talk about your amateur career. I know it was extensive. I know you had a lot of success. Yeah. Take us from the, the, you know, the Golden Gloves or the Junior Olympics um, or whatever. When I boxed, it was Junior Olympics. And, 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 and it still is. It still and, is. Yeah. Take us through that onto the Olympics. Oh my God! Um, I, I started off boxing, in, like I said, very young age. Um, won numerous uh, uh, Chicago at this champions. But before I say anything, I lost my first fight. Really? Yeah, I lost my first fight, and um, it, it just gave me more of a desire to to keep on training harder. And because my dad told me the same thing too, he said, like, hey, you gotta just work harder. You know, things like this are gonna happen. You, sometimes there's gonna be a guy that's gonna be better than you, but you gotta work your butt off in order to succeed, especially in boxing. Okay. And we just kept at it, uh, working out hard. I would run, uh, because I was a chubby little kid. Okay. So I had to drop weight because the other kids were a little bit taller than I was. And we just kept on working at it. Uh, I became, you know, numerous Chicago Park District uh, champion. Um, went to the states for the Illinois uh, state uh, championships. Uh, what gym? Three. What gym were you out of? I was out, I was actually out of Hamlin Park. Uh, I started off at Wells Park. Okay. Wells Park, and then I was there for like maybe two years, and then we ended up going to uh, Hamlin Park, and. And that's in Illinois. Yeah, that's okay. in Illinois, okay. Chicago, Chicago, okay. and there, and then we started 
winning tournaments, state tournaments, and then um, regional tournaments. So what happened is that all these uh, state tournaments, we used to get um, per diem back in the day. Really? Yeah. Nice. We, yeah, yeah, we used to get per diem. So for the folks, there's going to be, I got to stop you. There's going to be young viewers saying per diem. What does that mean? <laughs> so explain what I know what it is. Yeah. I was in the military, but tell them what per diem is. Like the association, the Illinois Boxing Association, we used to give you some money for, for, for uh, food. Right. For food, not for lodging. I mean, for lodging as well. But right. They paid for that up front. Right. And for um, eating, you know. But there were sometimes in, in certain places that you'd get um, breakfast and, and, and lunch and dinner because they provided that. But you would still get per diem. So I would, that was my first, like, job. Because <laughs> <laughs> right. I would go right. over there. Right. They would give us, like, about 25 bucks, I think it was. Okay. Yeah. Young kid, 25 yeah. bucks, a lot of money. 25 dollars. <laughs> you know, and so by the end of the tournament, if you, obviously you win. You keep on going. Right. Get money. Right. So come back with a couple of bucks. Right. You know, right. Uh, from the fight with the championship. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it was fun. But as I got older, I realized, you know what, not only do you get the, the, the a boxing outfit, you get a little bit of money, um, you get to travel. Right. You get to go to different states. Like, for us at the beginning, it was Illinois, obviously. Then it was Ohio, Indiana, um, Iowa, you know, that we would get because that was our five regions. But after that, I, I realized that there were national tournaments as well. Okay, mm -hmm. as a young kid, so I started aspiring. All right, and I want to go to a national tournament. Why? Because I'm gonna be able to go see the world. Right. right. For me, it was you know the U.S. And we ended up doing it. We ended up fighting. And, 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 and then you went to. Then you went out to the Olympics. So no. 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 So what happened is that with uh, me going through the USA tournaments, like the regional tournaments, and I was able to go to the national tournaments. Um, my first year was in uh, Northern Michigan, Marquette, for uh, the USA Junior Olympics. Okay. For the Junior Olympics. Um, my first year, we went up there, we're like, ah, oh, man, we're going to smash everybody in here and, and beat up everybody. But I didn't realize how, how, how tough it, the tournament, a national tournament was. It was my first one, never done it before. And I ended up fighting Arturo Ramos. Okay. All right. And he was a returning champion, national champion from last year. I honestly felt like I won, you know, but they, you know, it was a close fight. He wins. He ends up winning, and I stayed, because uh, we, we couldn't go back because we all had to stay in the group. So I seen him win night after night after night after night. Then at the nationals, at the championship, he ends up winning, and he gets a, uh, uh, a nice little jacket, some gloves. Right. So I was like, man, I was like, oh my God. I was like, next year, I'm coming back and we're gonna win this. And thanks to God, you know, the blessing and me working out hard, we ended up fighting again. And the second, uh, the second time I, I got a chance to fight, we ended up fighting in North Dakota and did what Arturo Ramos did. We ended up winning. Doing the same thing? Yeah, we won. And there, I was the national U.S. national champion, uh, junior Olympic champion. That I was able to uh, represent the U.S. in Ireland. Oh wow! At 15 okay. years old. Okay. So that's where my my you know uh, my my plan per se or, or my goal was to be an Olympian because I figured, man, you know what? You know these guys go to Barcelona, they go mm -hmm. all over the place, Ireland. I was like, maybe when I go to the Olympics, you know, be somewhat nice. And that's where my journey began. And then uh, we won that, went to Ireland, and fought two fights there. Won my first one, lost my second one. And it was a great experience. Okay. Great experience. And that's when I was 15. Then we move on to the Golden Gloves, you know. And right. I won four times here in Chicago. I won three times National Golden Gloves. I, I was ranked two in the, in the nation uh, one time, but you remember Arturo Ramos? I know the name. I know okay. the name, yeah. I ended up meeting him again for the championship. And you beat him, right? No? No, that's the guy that beat me twice. He beat you twice. Oh, yeah. no. The only guy that What, what weight were you fighting at? 139. Okay. 139. Okay. The only guy okay. who ever beat me twice in them. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where is he today? He's in uh, Texas. 
Okay. He's in Texas. He's he got a boxing. I don't remember. Um, I, don't remember I believe he did, but he didn't do. Do well. uh, He didn't do a lot. Okay. He didn't. You know, I don't know what what it was. I I don't have communication personally one on one, but okay. I I follow him through Facebook. Okay. And uh, so I, I am I incorrect or correct? Did you go to the Olympics? Did you make the Olympic team? Yes. I made okay. Let's talk about that. Talk about so that. we ended up uh, fighting, um, going through all the process. There's a little story I have to tell because um, during during my boxing career, uh, amateur boxing career, and then all these championships that I've won, you, um, Golden Gloves and all that. So I had gone to the PAL Nationals to Please go, athletically. Yeah, to try to make the Olympic team, or Olympic trials. Okay. Olympic trials. So we ended up going all the way to the final, ended up fighting Zab Judah. Wow. Yeah, we fought Zab Judah, and we ended up losing to him, okay, in the championship. I came back from that, and we ended up fighting again for uh, the USA um, national tournament, right? But starting in Illinois. You had to start in Illinois and move on to the region to go to the nationals, and then you will make your way in. So what happened there is that I got in late of training for, uh, the, U uh, for the Illinois uh, uh, boxing tournament, okay. and I was a, a lot overweight, so when I went down there, I had to lose weight. I had to lose eight pounds in two hours. Oh, wow. I did it. Okay. I did it. But I was out of it. I was, I was dead, like walking around. Oh, that's a lot of weight. Yes. And especially in two hours. And yeah, and I ended up not fighting. So that was it. That was, I was out of the tournament for the USA Championship. Okay. Right. And, um, I uh, I had fallen sort of like into a little like depression or you know what I'm gonna get this shit up boxing you forget it and I'm done so I had a conversation with one of my friends and uh, he's my best friend my compadre now and I'm like hey man you know what I think I'm gonna give up boxing and I'm done he goes well, what are you gonna do I'm like I'm gonna go to school you know do something with the, the, in school. He ended up laughing in my face. Wow. <laughs> he goes, uh, he's like, David, he's like, you've been doing this all your whole life. He's like, you're not going to be a doctor. <laughs> you're not going to be a lawyer. <laughs> you know, but it was truthfulness. Right. It was truthfulness. Be honest with you. Yeah. And that, my best friend. And uh, he goes, you know, he's like, you've been doing this your whole life. He's like, you're just going to let it go just like that. You're so close to trying to make the Olympics. I'm like, yeah, but, you know, we just had the last tournament. He's like, don't you have the golden gloves? I'm like, yeah, but I don't know if, you know, I want to do it. He's like, try it and just see what happens. Try it. So I ended up busting my butt. We won the Chicago Golden Gloves Championships. We go on into the Nationals, at Golden Gloves Nationals, and we end up winning the Golden Gloves Nationals in 1995. Okay. So from there, we go to um, the Olympic Trials. And in the Olympic Trials, we end up winning and, and going into uh, the finals with Zab Judah. I ended up fighting Zab Judah for the Olympic uh, berth, and we beat him the first time. Okay. All right. And then now we got to go to Augusta, Georgia, for the box house. So in that situation right there, um, if we fight again, if if I win, obviously I, I I'm an Olympian. If he wins, then we got to fight the next day because he's behind. Okay. Yeah. So. I was expecting this cat to come out and just like, you know, be awesome, like his boxing ability, what what he was, um, but he didn't show up. So we beat him. I think it was. Oh, eight. okay. When you say show up, he yeah, showed up in the ring. Yeah, right, right. right. I got show up. Right, right. So I ended up beating him. Um, I believe it was 12, 12 to three. Wow. Okay. In the points, something like that, and we won. We became an Olympian. Best moment of my life. And, and if I remember correctly, '96 is when David Reed won, right? David Reed won. We had a we yeah, had a good, a good squad. Team. Yeah. Yes, it was uh, Albert Guardado at 106, Eric Morrell at 112 from Madison, Wisconsin, uh, 125 Floyd. I mean 119 Zaire Rahim. Okay, I remember uh, that, that, that dream, the American Dream, or whatever. Something uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, 119. He one, fought Morales. Yes. And beat him. And beat him back. Yeah. 125 uh, was Floyd. Okay. Uh, 130, 132 was Terrence Carlton. 139 myself. 147 was Fernando Vargas. 
156 was uh, uh, David Reed. 165 was Ro Roshai Wells. 178 was Antonio Tarver. Um, and then the heavyweight was Nate Jones. Oh, hey, okay, yeah. okay. And then we had. Nate's out of Illinois, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, Chicago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we had a good. You had a good very good time, yeah. yeah. See how he remembered all of that? Yeah. You see that? I love that. <laughs> oh, yeah, each one of them. And those all big names. All yeah. big names. Yeah. Okay, cool. So then that's how that's how it was to be becoming an Olympian. It was, and then the opening ceremonies was. I, I tell everybody it's like the second most important day of my life. I mean, I just feel it very. I mean, powerful. When right here, national anthem in your name in uh, in the U.S. and everybody cheers for you. I mean, it was a great feeling. Then Muhammad Ali lit the. With the tour, yeah, I forgot about so that. For, right, that, yeah. for us, that, that was, was like, oh, we're gonna yeah. kill, we're gonna yeah. kill, because yeah. nobody knew what was gonna do. It, but you know, unfortunate things happen, and you know, it's how it is. But. Okay. Now, if I got it right, you turned pro in '96. Yes. In your opinion, from when you turned pro in '96. If you compare that era, the 90s, the late 90s, to, let's go weight class to weight class. Today, what's your opinion of when you turn pro in the lightweight division today? I, it, I mean, the, the names in our lightweight division when I turned pro was phenomenal, man. You know, I mean, today, not, not many. Okay. You know? Um, and I I started asking the question. Yeah, and, I, and, I thought, and I and and I ended up um, starting at uh, super super lightweight. Yeah, at one thirty nine or one forty. That's where I started. Then I dropped down a couple of years later to the lightweight. Okay. So I didn't start off at lightweight. And but again, we had Chavez, Major Taylor, I mean Camacho. You had all these guys that were, that were phenomenal. Um, now it's it's, it's a little bit. Less, not, not, not as many. Yeah. Looking at your record, I'm gonna throw out a couple of names of some guys you fought that jumped out at me when I was researching you. The Dancing Machine, Emmanuel Augustus. Yeah. What was it like fighting him? Because we know he gave Floyd a hell of a fight. Yeah, like for me, it was unreal. Like he was a, a tough guy to hit, tough guy to. Was he being silly when you fought? No. Okay, because you know sometimes he does yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. that he does with the dancing. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. Did he move his head and obviously try to, yes, he did, but to be clowning around or anything like that and then just throwing punches, no, he did not do that. Okay. And Julio. Julio, yeah, Julio that was, that guy um, um, hit me with an uppercut and that I could not close my mouth for, for really? like about three weeks. Wow. Yeah, we ended up beating him and, and um, moved up the lab. Okay. Kendall Hall. Kendall Hall, oh my God, great fighter, big puncher, big puncher, but um, still a fight that I wish I would have done again. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay, August 12, two thousand six, you fight Jose Armando Santa Cruz for the interim WBC lightweight champion. You beat him. Okay, and we talked a little bit off camera. And I want to kind of explain this because I know people will be wondering. So, and you explained it really well, so I get it now. You fought in for the interim belt. There was about a year um, till you had your next fight, which was against Eric Morales. Now, if you would walk me into that fight, that fight, you were, you were still the interim champion, but when you fought right. Morales, like you said, that was for the, I guess they call right. it the regular uh, lightweight, WBC lightweight belt, and great fight that you, that you won. But take us through the Morales fight um, and your thoughts about that fight. Um, first was the magnitude of that fight was big. It was actually here in, well, in Chicago at the Rosemont. Tons of fans. Yeah, all the places. Arena, just, yeah. So it was beautiful. Um, it was, it had, Chicago hasn't had a big time, uh, a, a Chicago born uh, a fighter uh, to be fighting for a championship, bringing a, a championship home. Uh, amazing. Another uh, big thing about that is that uh, I, fought one time at the McCormick place for the Chicago Golden Glove Championships. It was my first year fighting there. And I went in there and I looked around and I was like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Like imagine me one of these days. And fast forward a couple of years later and we're fighting for a championship uh, there at the Allstate Arena. And it was just a big magnitude fight. Loved it, went to war. 
knew I had to go to war against Morales. I knew it. Um, first round, he uh, knocks me down. <laughs> you know, and it's part part of it. You right. get back up and you start fighting again. Um, and it was toe to toe, back back and forth. Um, we ended up, I believe, dropping him in the seventh. Then. Um, in in the in the last round, my manager Jim Strickland goes, David, we we need this round, we need it, we need it. So I knew all I had to do was just throw punches, and we ended up getting the the decision. Decision. Yeah. As I said in the intro, you are like a throwback to like Gillette Fry. I know it'd be a little bit before both of our time, but I watched it. I was saying YouTube, my dad watched him in his day, day in his day, Gillette Fry and I fights. I mean, dude. You have more cuts, more eyes. I mean, you like Carmen Basilio, you're like the Hispanic <laughs> Carmen Basilio. I mean, when you were in a fight, I mean, you were in a fight. Yeah. I mean, I, and you kept going, you know, cut up and eye closed. And I mean, you are truly, in my opinion, the definition. I always talk about Arturo, and I know, but you were a blood and guts warrior. I yeah. mean, you fought through some adversity in the ring with cuts and, and all of that. Now, you, your next fight you go on to do, and I'm going to give you credit here, mm. because I always say that. I'm not a huge fan of Floyd Mayweather. I'm going to say that personally. But I give him credit that he's the best fighter, in my opinion, best fighter of his generation. But you did something that he didn't have the balls to do, and I'm going to give you credit for it. You fought Manny Pacquiao when Manny Pacquiao was pretty much in his prime, not waited when he first started talking about Mayweather Pacquiao, and you know this. Mm -hmm. Maybe the new viewers don't know it, but they started talking about that fight in about 09. Mm -hmm. Then it took place six years later. He knew that Manny was getting long in the two, and it was a different Manny Pacquiao. But you fought Manny Pacquiao. And we're going to talk about his recent one. I know people say, well, but what about, we're going to talk about when you fought him in 2007. You fought him when a lot of Manny Pacquiao was still left. Mm -hmm. Speed was there and all of that. Talk about that fight, the event, I think that was on a pay-per-view, right? Correct. If I remember Correct. correctly. Mm -hmm. Talk about that fight. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna have you talk about the post-fight interview. <laughs> but if you haven't seen the post-fight interview, I gotta say, it. go watch his video because it says, one of the words that he uses is one of my favorite, and it starts with an F and it ends with a K. And it was hilarious, but the most hilarious line that Davis said was, I think Freddie Roach was hitting me too. And it, if you know the old joke where the guy goes back to his corner, he says, uh, his cornerman says, hey, the guy's not, the boxer that you're fighting, he's not laying a glove on me. And the guy says to him, then who the hell's hitting me, the referee? Yeah. That was hilarious. I mean, that was hilarious. Yeah. But talk about your fight with Manny Pacquiao. I don't care that you didn't come out. I know you liked the one, yeah, but yeah. still, you fought him in his prime and put up a hell of a fight. You was busted up like you normally are a lot of your fights, but you again, you showed the heart that you're made of. Talk about that fight. Yeah, so that obviously that was one of the biggest events or fights that it, for my career that I've ever had or been part of. Um, what can I say about the guy, Manny Pacquiao? He was phenomenal fast and everything. But I'm going to give you my explanation that honestly, I felt there's no way this guy's going to beat me because he's smaller, he's coming up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, he's, fought, he's a fast fighter, but in my mind, it's like, I fought fast guys too. So this is nothing, nothing different. We're going to go in there, we're going to go balls out and beat his ass. You know, we trained our asses off for that fight. We did everything we were supposed to do. So I, I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, well, I didn't train. I did it all. I, I, I ate well, I exercised, I ran my ass off, I did everything that I had to do. He was just better than me. He was just faster. Uh, he was not stronger. Like I keep on telling people, it's, it's, it wasn't the, 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 uh, the how hard yeah, he it is. Speed. It was just speed. speed. So many punches during yes. my time, I couldn't keep track. I'm trying to block one here and there's four, five, six <laughs> going over here. Um, but, you know, we, we went over there also as well, saying like, well, Morales couldn't beat him, uh, Barrera could beat him. Even though Morales beat him once, I, I felt, and then Manny Pacquiao stopped him. I'm like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna put an end to this. We're gonna put an end to this. And we went in there with that mentality of like, just bulldozing him through. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And, you know, we ended up kissing the cat. And, um, how he got me was, how it was a lazy jab to the body that he just went over. And gotcha. Yeah. Okay. And you know, that's how it is. Let me ask you this. Let's fast forward to this year. I picked Keith Thurman to beat him. Now I'm not overly impressed with Keith Thurman. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's a bad fighter. But I thought, he got to get the better of the old man. Man, he's like 41 years old. He's doing his 
politics, he's a senator, he's not going to be as focused as he should. And he kicked the shit out of Keith Thurman for the most part, dropped him in the first round mm -hmm. and won the fight. Watching that fight and having faced Manny in his prime, because he's not his prime, I'm mm -hmm. he's way past his prime. But I always say too, that legendary fighters usually have that one left in their tank and they can pull it out. It didn't shock me, but it, it did surprise me because I didn't think he was going to, I thought it would be a boring fight, Thurman would just move around. And, but were you surprised that he beat Thurman or no? Mm -hmm. I had a feeling he was saying no. Mm -hmm. I, I was surprised. I actually had Manny winning by, by a knockout or, or a decision. Um, I had a friend who, uh, he's like, hey, I'm going to Vegas, what, who should I, I, I pick? I'm like, bet on Manny for a decision okay. or a, a late round stoppage. So you knew it. You yeah. said, what did you see? Just out of curiosity. Just, what so did you say? The, the way Manny fights his boxing ability against Thurman with his previous fights, He's slow for for Manny. Okay. And too 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 still for him. So I figured it was going to be one of the boom 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 get out and which what it was. Yeah, you call that right. If you had to pick one fight from your career, professional career, or even your amateur career, but because I asked Alfonso rather this question last week and he surprised me and said it was actually an amateur fight that he thought it was his best. What night was your best? When do we see at your best? Olympics. When I made the Olympic team. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, okay. the Olympic team was, I think, my greatest moment. Okay, and, and, and your best, best fight in the ring, all that. Okay. I felt, yeah. Okay. You retired in 2011 from boxing? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's catch the viewers up. I know you have, it's a main event real estate. Yes, sir. And you gave your wife credit for that? Yes, sir. Okay, look at that. You see that? He gave his wife credit. That's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Love the name. Yeah. Love the name. Deb, if we could. Before I get into that, zoom in. I love this. I saw him put up on Facebook and I had to correct somebody that said they didn't understand it. I said, I totally get it. Mm -hmm. he's, he's clean at the bottom. He's beat up on the right. So he'll go in there and do it. And we'll talk about his real estate stuff. But he'll go in there and he'll be a champion for you. He'll take the bruises and the bumps and the bruises for you as his client. So you got main event here. You got his WBC belt in the middle. And then you got an action photo here, looking tough. <laughs> Let's talk about life after boxing. Lay it out about your real estate. Tell me well, what you do. So far, uh, well, I'm a broker now for about five years. Uh, my wife is the one that, the managing broker of the company. She's the one that's, you know, handles it. She's actually been in the business longer than I have. and. Um, it was just a smart move for us to go into the, the real estate world. Um, she has helped me along the way, helped me out. And now we have a good uh, company with about 13 agents. Now. Okay, so you're not doing agent, you're doing broker stuff now? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you start out as an agent? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'm, like I said, I'm still an agent. I still go out and show people okay. houses and stuff like that. Um, and that's, that's what I do. I love interacting with people. I love ha having conversations talking to them about what their future goals, what they want for the house, what are they looking for, why are they getting the house. And so I, I just have, I like that communication that I have with them. Okay. What year did you get your real estate license? Uh, about 2014, 15, okay. 14, 14. All right. 14, four, four years. For the viewers, where is your office located? My office is located in Porch Park area, which is 5128 West Irving Park Road. Okay. Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Uh, one other question with the boxing, a couple actually. If you had the power to change one thing in boxing, what would you change? Our, our, our whole system, our whole, make it, uh, make it where guys retire and they get something. <laughs> You I'm going to tell you why I'm chuckling, but go ahead. You know, make it where the guys retire or... or retirement or, fund. Yeah. I or, I've been or, fighting for this for years. Or, I actually stopped asking because it's so difficult. Just the retirement or something where even the, the promoters can all, like, I guess how they do baseball, <laughs> you know, and they have their certain team or whatever that they're constantly promoting. Some of these guys just help them out. Right. Not the words. Something okay. that... Helps the fighter after they retire. Because we see too many brokers. Yeah. 
And the, and, well, and I, and I, I don't really ask this question anymore because I get frustrated that I know it's not going to happen. No, it's, it's it, going to be too hard, it's, man. It's just, I know it's, it's, it's really, really, really the hard. Business, the business right. of, of amateur boxing where you have a, a smaller promoter that's not going to be paying the guys right. the same thing as they would. Yeah. But, you know, it's, there's levels and tears to it. I mean, unfortunately, or, or just uh, give the fighters uh, financial literacy. Uh, that too, like yeah. they do in the NFL. When these yeah. guys come in, they get their financial yeah. counsels and all that. Yeah. You know, so no, absolutely, help, I agree with that. To, to help them out in that way, you know, to help them invest their money somewhere else as well. Okay. We'll take a portion of it and put it away somewhere. Finally, on the boxing part, if you had words of wisdom for the young man or woman just turning pro, what would you tell them? And you can look at the camera on that one. Uh, Shoot it out to them. Be honest, loyal, and a person of your word. <laughs> Carries a long way. And it, it doesn't it just that applicable to boxing. It, That's everything. applicable to life. I'd say life. that more on Facebook. If it, you give your word, even if you made a mistake when you yeah. gave your word, you got to honor your word. Yeah, man. Yeah, loyalty, your word, absolutely. Okay, on that note, we're going to take a short commercial break. Hey, folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring. And the New York thing, forget about it, Bad Brad Berkwood. And I got an exciting opportunity for people that would like to sponsor the Bad Brad Berkwood show or advertise with me. If you're interested, call the Ringside Report office at 703 517 2155, or you can send me a business email to B B E R K W I T T, B Berkwood, my last name, of course, at AOL. Com. One more time, that phone number is 703-517-2155. Sponsors and advertisers, we're looking for you. All right? Forget about it. Hey, folks, this is the man with the fedora, the pinky ring, and the New York thing. Forget about it. Bad Brad Berkwood. And what do Gene Fulmer, Aaron Pryor, James Whip Tillis, Davey Pearl, Joey Bishop, Al Martino, Jerry Bale, and Roy Jones Jr. all have in common. Well, they are some of the many interviews in my boxing book, Boxing Interviews of a Lifetime. Now, if you would like to pick up a copy of this book, go to authorhouse.com. Again, that's authorhouse.com. And if you would like it personally autographed, all you have to do is pay postage and handling to St. John, Indiana, back to your location, and I will sign it the way you would like it, or I can put a personal description that I think you would like in it. All right? Forget about it. Hey folks, this is Bad Brad Berkwood, and I'm the personal manager for James Quick Tillis. Now a short little bio on him. On October 3rd, 1981, he faced Mike Weaver for Mike's WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World and went 15 rounds, dropped a close decision to him. Fast forward to May 3rd, 1986, when James Quick Tillis took on a then young Mike Tyson, who was 19 and 0 with 19 knockouts. Quick took him the distance, and he was the first man to do that, and he laid the blueprint that Buster Douglas would take four years later and wind up beating Iron Mike Tyson. Now, with that said, if you would like to book James Quick Tillis for personal autograph signings, TV, movie events, personal appearances, you can reach out to me at the Ringside Report office at 703-517-2155. Again, that's 703-517-2155. Or you can send me a business email to B-B-E-R-K-W-I-T-T. -T, Berkwit at AOL.com. Again, I'm the personal manager for James Quick Tillis, also known as the Fighting Cowboy. Forget about it. All right, folks, we're now back with the former WBC lightweight champion in the world, David Diaz, who just told you about main event. He's, he's doing brokerage work, broker work, right? You call him, you say broker? So check him out, okay? His wife gets credit for the name, which I think is fantastic. All right, I'm going to throw a bunch of questions out at you. They're fun questions. There's no right or wrong answers. All Whatever right. comes to your mind, that's what all you right. say. Sounds like a plan. Favorite fighter of all time? Who is this Chavez? Okay. Favorite fight of all time? Magic Taylor's Chavez. Okay. What was your thoughts on that? Did you because think it was stopped? 
No, I, I poorly or no? No, I, I don't think so. Um, I, you go back and now you, they bring up things, but at the time I was a young kid that was like all hurt because Chavez was going to lose. And when he comes back, it's like the hero comes back and uh, helps us all win. So, okay. Yeah. Favorite boxing commentator? Wow. Al. Al Bernstein? Yes. Love Al. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah, good guy. Great guy. Good guy. On to point. Since yes. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. I don't understand why they put Morello with them on Showtime. It drives me nuts. Mm -hmm. Because I think he's MMA. And he's so... And, and Al's got energy. Yeah. But he's like up there always. And, you know, and just... Ugh. I, I like Al um, when Al was on ESPN. ESPN. And, he, you know, he was with Barry Tompkins and all of those guys. Yeah, I love Al. He's my favorite, too. Let's see what you say on this one. I'm curious. I think I know the answer, but I'm still going to ask you. Favorite football team? Oh man, you know you can't go wrong with eight by Bears, boy. Yeah. And the Bears in Bears. Bobby, did you did you put him up to that? No, no. Because <laughs> Bobby, I don't know if you saw Bobby. Did you see Bobby's no, face? No. Bobby said it's football season. Don't ask me. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit of this, but I'm still because it's funny. There's no weddings. There's no funerals. There's no bar mitzvahs. <laughs> there's no anything. Yeah. I'm not coming no, when no, football no, is on. Yeah. Not bother me, Bobby had said. Favorite uh, basketball team. Oh, Chicago Bulls. Okay, I'm seeing a theme here. Yeah. Baseball team? Cubs. Cubs, okay. Favorite genre of movies? What type of movies do you like? I'm more of an action guy. Okay. Yeah. Favorite movie? Uh, ooh. Favorite movie? Uh, the, the Lethal Weapons, you know, they're good. Uh, Bruce Willis. Die Hard. Die Hard. Yeah. yeah. Like a certain Yeah, then I, I go with the Die Hard. Okay. Sure. Okay. Favorite musical band? Uh, you guys might not know, but I'm a Norteño. My music is okay. Mexican. Oh, that's fine. Releros del Norte. Okay. That's for me. Okay. Is, is, obviously, he's big. big. <laughs> yeah, big in the yeah. Mexican community. Okay. They, they were not no more. You know, they, they got older. <laughs> okay. Okay. Favorite concert you've ever seen? Mana. Okay. Mana is a, it's a Spanish uh, uh, rock. My brother took us one time and it was crazy. Now where was it at? At the Rosemont. At the Rosemont? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Favorite male singer? Ooh, man. Uh, I'll go with Mark Anthony. Okay. Spanish, okay. Spanish. That's fine. Flip it. Favorite female? Ooh. Alicia Keys, man. She, okay. She can sing. What do you like? What song you like? I have probably tons of them, but yeah, the, no. I mean, I just say just her yeah. voice. You like her general, voice? Yeah. Okay. Favorite song? I know that's a tough one. Wow. Oh. It, it it's a Spanish song that um, it talks about Acapulco, and the only reason I like that song is because my brother loved it. My brother passed away I'm sorry, in, yeah. on on nine seven, and <laughs> recuerdo recuerdos de Acapulco. My memories of Acapulco, and it's it's a, just a beautiful song. Okay, mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, did you have a walkout song? Yeah, and, I, and it was uh, again a Mexican song. Okay, um, it was uh, Pueblos de Guerrero, which means the villages of, of of the state of where my parents are from. Okay, and it was a nice song. The man question: favorite type of car, sports car, muscle car, whatever. Who I've always liked the Maserati. Okay. The one that's out there. <laughs> <laughs> He's sucking up to me. He's sucking up to me. Tell you what, it's getting ready to come up for service. There you go. I'll call you at the brokerage. I'll call you at the, I'll call at that main event. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Diaz, I'll be calling you for your husband to pay for the maintenance on this damn Maserati. Yeah, no. Um, Would you like your Maserati? Yeah, I like okay. Maserati. Okay. Nice car. Favorite noise or sound? Oh. What do you mean by say pain knows the sound just holy shit. Otherwise there's a session. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one, you don't have one. No. Okay. Least favorite noise or sound. Is any sound uh, that drives you nuts? My dad's uh sneezing. Okay. And it's unfortunate that I inherited that. So well. you're real loud? Yeah, my dad my dad's too. the worst. In the movie theaters, it's embarrassing. <laughs> He's everywhere. Hot job. I'm like, come on. 
the shit out of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me too. My dad was moving in a movie theater and they were like, we thought the walls were coming yeah, down. Yeah, this thing's yeah, really, really for me. I didn't hear you that. You got it too? Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> I, I, I have an idea what you're going to say, but favorite food? Uh, tacos al pastor, man. Now, when you were putting on the weight, was that what was causing it? Yeah. <laughs> when you were a kid? Yes, the burritos. Your, I, your mom cooked well? Grandma? Yes, mom? Mom, my mom. My yeah. mom was a good cook. Okay. Great cook, actually. Okay. If you were to hit the lottery tomorrow, what's the first thing you'd do? Hook my family up. Okay. Favorite vacation destination? Been there or want to be there? Either one. Where um, would you like to go or where have you been? Doesn't matter. I, 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 uh, I want to go to uh, Bora Bora. Okay. You know, check it out. I see pictures. Nice. Beautiful, 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 beautiful water, yes. Beautiful, yes, the water. Okay. If you could meet one person from any time in history, and it doesn't have to be a boxer, it could be, but anybody, anybody at all from any time in history, who would you like to meet and what would your first question be for them? Who would I like to meet? I want to see my brother again. No, no, no. That's fine. Do well, we'll, you know what you're asking? I just... Uh, okay. I respect that. I don't know if you know Jack Callahan by chance? Jack the Kid Callahan? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jack, um, I didn't know it was going into the interview and I asked that question. He lost two of his sons. Mm -hmm. And his son Patrick, God rest both of his sons' souls, uh, son Patrick was very little. And I asked him that question. And, you know, he, he was very touched and he told me, I said, it's your answer, whatever you say. And he said, I'd like to see Patrick again. And I said, what would you, he said, Daddy loves you. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing with you hugging him. So I admire that. Finally, last question of the interview. If you have one, what is the saying you live your life by? I, just be honest, truthful. That's simple. That's it. It's simple. All right, David, what I'd like you to do, when we close out, I want you to look at Deb, and I want you to send out a message to your family. It's whatever you want to say at your platform, brother. Mm -hmm family, friends, and fans. But I'd like you to do it first in Spanish, mm -hmm. and then in English, it doesn't have to be the same thing. Whatever you say, go for it. Quiero darle gracias a toda mi familia, amigos y fanáticos que siempre me han apoyado en el deporte y ahora en mi, mi vida de real estate. Se les agradezco mucho, gracias. Okay, now in English. Mm -hmm. To my family, friends, and fans who have supported me throughout my career in the boxing, uh, in boxing. I appreciate it, all your uh, support, and thank you for supporting me in my new business as real estate agent. All right, hey, appreciate uh, you man. coming out. Thank you so much. I sir. do. Good. No, another no, no, good no, interview. No, another good thank interview. You, thank you. Try to do my best. I appreciate it. All right, folks, you asked me to get them on, I got them on. That's what we do here. We bring you the big names to tell their stories. Again, I'm going to remind you when you watch my show, remember it's about the interviewee. Thank you. I, I, don't get me wrong. I appreciate all the compliments I do. And I, and I appreciate the support and all of that. But my goal and Debbie's goal when we brought this show back, when we moved here from Oklahoma, was to make sure that we consistently brought out the stories of our guests. Because, it's, it, yeah, it's boxing, but we also have other people on too. Everybody has a story. You just you have to listen. I'm going to take Sugar Ray Seals, who was on last week. Open your ears, listen, and focus. People have stories. And if you have kindness in your heart, don't talk about it, show it, okay? Watch these shows, take the good stuff out of them because there's so much that the people say in these chairs from experience and, and life experience and business experience that you could take and put it into your lives and become a better person or a better businessman or a better boxer or whatever it may be. All right, folks? That's another show in the can, forget about it. And as Frank Sinatra sang so eloquently, so long ago, the best is yet to come. Bad Brad out. <laughs>